APGO Educational Topic Number 43, Amenorrhea. Amenorrhea is the absence of menstruation and can be classified as primary or secondary. A young woman with primary amenorrhea has never menstruated. If she has never menstruated by age 13 and has no secondary sexual development, then she is classified as having primary amenorrhea. Alternatively, by age 15, if she has never menstruated and has secondary sexual development, then she is also classified as having primary amenorrhea. Secondary amenorrhea is diagnosed when a menstruating woman has not menstruated for three to six months or has missed three periods. These terms should not be confused with oligomenorrhea, which is the reduction of the frequency of menses, with bleeding-free days greater than 40 but less than 6 months. The objectives of this video are to explain the pathophysiology and identify etiologies of amenorrhea and oligomenorrhea, including possible nutritional causes, describe associated symptoms, examination findings, diagnostic tests, and management of amenorrhea, discuss the consequences of untreated amenorrhea and oligomenorrhea. The most common cause of amenorrhea is pregnancy, and this should always be ruled out prior to further evaluation of amenorrhea. The three most common causes of amenorrhea not from pregnancy are hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction, ovarian dysfunction, and anatomic abnormalities. Let's start our discussion of hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction with a quick tutorial about the HPO axis. The hypothalamus releases GnRH in a pulsatile fashion, and this travels to the anterior pituitary in the pituitary stalk. This GnRH stimulates the anterior pituitary to release FSH and LH. The FSH and LH stimulate the ovaries to begin the cycle of folliculogenesis, ovulation, and estrogen and progesterone release. Anything that alters this delicate feedback loop can cause hypothalamic pituitary amenorrhea. A prolactin secreting pituitary adenoma or craniopharyngioma can impinge on the pituitary stalk and alter blood flow. More common functional causes include weight loss, excessive exercise, or obesity. Modifying the causal behavior can often restore menses. The female athlete triad of amenorrhea, disordered eating, and osteopenia or osteoporosis demonstrates the need for sufficient caloric intake to enable the energy expenditure for the HPO axis to function. Other potential causes for HPO amenorrhea include head injury, marijuana, psychoactive drugs, chronic anxiety, anorexia nervosa, and chronic medical illness. Now we will discuss another cause of amenorrhea, ovarian failure. Ovarian failure occurs when the ovaries are exhausted or are resistant to FSH and LH. The most common causes of ovarian failure are chromosomal abnormalities such as Turner syndrome, which lead to ovarian dysgenesis, or autoimmune ovarian failure. Anatomic abnormalities causing amenorrhea can be congenital or acquired. Common congenital causes include imperforate hymen or absence of the uterus or vagina. Asherman syndrome is the most common cause of secondary amenorrhea. This can occur after dilation and curettage, especially for retained products of conception in the setting of infection. This causes scarring of the endometrium. The first step of treatment is to establish the cause of amenorrhea. Many physicians use the progesterone challenge test as the first step. A patient takes oral progesterone for 10 days. After stopping the progesterone, if she then has bleeding, we refer to this as a withdrawal bleed, for she is essentially withdrawing from the progesterone therapy. This tells us that she has adequate estrogen, a competent endometrium, and a patent outflow tract. If bleeding occurs, then further workup should investigate causes like thyroid disease, hyperprolactinemia, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and congenital adrenal hyperplasia. If withdrawal bleeding does not occur, then a combined estrogen and progesterone test can be performed to differentiate an outflow tract abnormality from inadequate estrogen levels. In this test, estrogen is given for 21 days, then progesterone is given for 7 to 10 days, and the patient is again evaluated for a withdrawal bleed. If no bleeding occurs after this test, then an ultrasound or MRI should be performed to look for anatomic abnormalities. If bleeding occurs after the test, FSH levels should be checked. A high serum FSH is indicative of primary ovarian insufficiency. A karyotype should then be performed to assess for complete or partial deletion of the X chromosome, as in Turner syndrome. Treatment of amenorrhea depends on the etiology. Anatomic abnormalities such as imperforate hymen can be surgically corrected, which will allow for menstruation and fertility. Asherman syndrome can be treated with lysis of adhesions and postoperative estrogen therapy. Women with ovarian failure should receive hormone therapy to avoid the negative side effects of estrogen deficiency, especially for bone and heart health. 
Hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction can be improved by correcting the functional cause of the disruption. The consequences of untreated amenorrhea depend also on the underlying etiology. For women with the athlete's triad, there are many issues that may need to be addressed, including disordered eating patterns, body image issues, and bone health. This may involve a multidisciplinary team with cognitive behavioral therapy. The consequences for these women can involve long-term cardiovascular and osteoporosis risks from years of low estrogen exposure. This concludes the APCO educational video on amenorrhea. We have discussed many of the causes, evaluation, and treatment options for this condition in women.